topic. This is the president of Oklahoma Wesleyan University, Dr. Everett Piper. He posted an open letter to his students after one of them claimed he felt victimized, little, little victimize a microaggression <laughs> because of a religious sermon. Take a look. This is not a safe space. It's a place to learn. And sometimes learning is uncomfortable. Sometimes learning involves being confronted when you're wrong and challenged to think higher and better ideas rather than accepting those self-centered ideas that lead you to narcissism. It's the common bond. You must agree with us. You must be one of us. You must share our ideas. And if you don't, we will crush you. We will silence you. Chris, do you have any concerns about what's going on on college campuses? I do. <clears throat> yeah. I, I think, number one, we can't be afraid of anxiety and having ourselves challenged and expanded. That's how we learn. That's how we grow. But I also want to call out that we have to make sure that we are looking at the wording we're using and that we aren't using words that still oppress uh, minorities of different kinds. So Chris, is, isn't that horse completely out of the barn in terms of us watching our language? Well, I mean, I that's, think all, that's all I feel like I, I do. And I get excoriated by my kids. But even my kids, people, who just graduated college are, last year, are looking back and going, hey, I don't know what's going on with the next generation. True. They're out of college six months. listening to the language they're using and how it's oppressing. In this case, I think they're being too sensitive. It's okay to be uncomfortable, as long as we're not talking about using words that oppress minorities. Well, status. of course. I love I love this well, guy. Let me, I want to give you some more of what Sam's got, some more well, of the outtakes from that letter. Okay, so here's there's a number of excerpts. Here's one. Anyone who dares challenge them and thus makes them feel bad about themselves is a hater, a bigot, an oppressor, and a victimizer. Uh, Darren, my, my college professor made me feel bad all the time. Right. All the time. Well, and I thought that was their job. They thought that was their job. I don't know. Maybe you and I have a kinship here that I've been <laughs> abused in exactly the same way. I, I, I love this guy. And at the risk of sounding like a grumpy old man yelling at kids to get off my lawn I think kids need to hear the message that he's offering and I love the vocabulary that he uses they're probably gonna have to resort to a dictionary to understand a little bit about wait, what wait, he's talking wait, wait, about. Wait, one more one more okay. Sam, one more, then one more uh, this is not a safe place but rather a place to learn to learn that life isn't about you this is a place where you will quickly learn that you need to grow up and Reba, wait 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 Reba and, and that's what I keep hearing I, I keep wondering what where's the end game for the college kids and they want to feel safe well isn't that the, the campus security's job not the administration <laughs> I job. Think this is backlash of professors. Professors are mad because these kids are organizing. They're calling out this microaggression. They're calling out some of the oppression. Wait, wait, wait! I'm feeling my heart is hurting. My heart is hurting, Ariba. No, microaggression, microaggression. I'm triggered. I'm triggered. I'm triggered. Now, Ariba, you can't talk like that. No, no, I'm saying the <laughs> students have called out microaggression, and now the professors. This is the backlash. This is the response to students standing up for themselves. So now he's going to call them a bunch of cry. Hi, babies, because they stood up to the I think it's like two different issues. I think it's two different issues because I do <laughs> like it when the students do speak and they have a voice. But I think in this issue, it speaks to the larger issue that we see in a lot of the younger generation. I see it a lot of my younger peers. My mom's been a, an educator for 30 years. She's seen the shift. There is a lot of entitlement where they feel like that they get to, they can get to the, the destination without having to endure the journey. Natalie, I have 30 seconds. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, when I heard what he had to say, my response was, finally, someone is saying this, someone's standing up to the ridiculousness that has been going on with all of this microaggressive rhetoric. I, I talked to Alan Dershowitz about this, of all things, and he said he felt, well, and he felt the administrations were being cowardly by not speaking up in this manner and mm. just asserting what it is they're, they, they're, they're trying to do and not be fearful of open discourse that's all that's what bothers me is that the first amendment is under attack i'm really surprised you're not giving me a microaggression about that but anyway <laughs>